Boys, welcome back to the channel. It's coffee time. I've got a great story to tell you, so grab a coffee with me, and let it sit back, relax, and let me tell you all about it. For the probably like the last three years, I only watch YouTube for my entertainment. Like I watch anime and you know, I watch TV shows on Netflix, but pretty much I just watch YouTube when I'm just like, you know, procrastinating mostly. And since then, I've become one with the YouTube algorithm. Like the whatever that recommends, I watch it and I enjoy it. It just kind of like feeds me more and more random content that I didn't know I wanted to watch until I watched it until I'm just like an empty husk just watching some random videos like in a deep dive about slime reacts and stuff like that. It's crazy. Obviously, you know, I'm a massive fan of Warhammer. I've got loads of it sat behind me, but I'm also a massive fan of stuff like Godzilla and anime. So when I started getting like recommended these videos of like G Gundam dioramas and like Godzilla dioramas, whether it's like a Gundam that's all broken up or like in resin and... Godzilla like walking across the sea or like big sea monsters floating through water and stuff I just like couldn't help myself watching them and they were so satisfying to like watch all like the resin go up and then set and then them reveal it and they look really cool and so did everyone else clearly because my god these videos have like millions millions of views it's crazy if there's one thing I love more than Warhammer Godzilla and anime it's millions of views <laughs> I knew I had to try this myself. And that's when my mini factory actually got in touch with me to promote their latest campaign, uh, working with Print Your Monsters for Plants and Rocks version two. And they have like this, they have add-ons and one of them is in particular Underwater Monster, which is like literally perfect for what I wanted to do. So they're the sponsors of today's video. We're gonna hear more about a little bit about them later. But today I'm gonna be doing my first resin pour. And it's gonna be huge, like, like 20, 30 centimeters huge, like way bigger than you should do for the first one. So here's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be fine, I promise. It's gonna be fine, honestly. So first off, I had to like buy everything. So pretty much just ordered everything on Amazon, like any other reprobate like myself. I had Georgia help me choose everything. <laughs> foliage. Foliage. It's foliage. There's no I after the O. It looks like weed. Okay, I don't know if I was about to say that. <laughs> don't don't tell Susan. Is that a weed? One mil. It's a hundred mil. It's 100 mil long. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Oops>. <laughs> Everything I use in the video, I'll try and leave a link for, uh, down in the description. They are going to be Amazon affiliate links. So if you do buy anything from there, then it is going to really help out the channel. I do get a cut. do not cost you anything extra. And it really helps me out. I then downloaded all the files from Plants and Rocks version 2. Like all the things that I kind of needed from the campaign. I kind of found like, I got the, I've obviously got the add-on for the monster, which comes with caves. And I got lots of rocks and stuff like that. But I kind of wanted some sea critters as well. So I like basically went on my mini factory, did a quick speed run, found this great designer and they had loads of stuff. So I downloaded some of that as well. We're not really going to focus on that today, but like, you know, we got we got secret as, as well as rocks and stuff. I then printed these out. Sadly, the footage for the actual printing of the monster did fail. So we're going to do it on the cave. But I printed all the rocks and plants on my Elgu Saturn and my Mars 2 Pro. If you've seen any of my resin printing videos, you kind of get the idea. But essentially, I printed it out and then left the model to drip dry, essentially. I have like this little arm that I printed so the model can like sit at an angle. All the excess resin will drip off. And then use this plastic scraper, which is kind of really really good for getting models off i don't have like a flexible build plate on these resin printers so i use this it's as good as the metal scraper but then it doesn't scratch your build plate get underneath first and then i use the metal scraper just to get the rest off which as you can see this one's scratched but it doesn't scratch it anymore that was before i got the plastic scraper i then rinse it off in a pickle jar with isopropyl alcohol in this is kind of like one step that you can do i also use an ultrasonic cleaner to get the, the rest off so i use the pickle jar to get the the most of the resin off then the ultrasonic cleaner gets the rest off where you can't get in my ultrasonic cleaner gets it's quite warm after it's been on for a while so this is a good time to take the supports off if not i'd warm it up in like some warm water and stuff like that once you've cured it to get the supports off without damaging your model too much then i leave it to dry that's kind of like a really important step if you see any resin models that are cured with white stuff on them that's the alcohol that's dried under uv so i let it dry naturally i'll use a hair dryer to speed it up and then i put it in a, my uv curing bank which is just a bread bin with uv lights in it and then once that's done that's all ready to go next up i had to build the rock so i used to do this at school i did this at school clubs and stuff like that it's relatively straightforward you buy some insulation foam from your hardware store you chop it up to size i use like a candle lid to create a circle i started cutting like little bits off because i knew the shape i wanted like a like an arching shape i started cutting little bits off a pile on top of each other and sticking it with a hot glue gun i found that that didn't really work so what i did was i just basically made a tower all the same size and then glued it and then carved into it afterwards i have like this sheet of plastic which i'm going to be using for the mold of the resin so i have basically used it to make sure that i wasn't cutting the base too large and so it would actually fit and then i carved it into a cool shape just using a knife and then i made a special concoction which i've used i basically just mix in like wall filler pva glue and then some sand as well and it create basically creates paste which you can like smear all over the foam it adds strength to it makes it more dense also it gives it a, like a rough texture because we're going to be dry brushing this for the most of it so we want like a nice rocky texture just to smear it all over it and then let it dry no don't lick that wait why am i talking to myself in my own script <laughs> 
Anyway, whilst I was drying, I got everything else printed out. So here's all the models that we have. I ended up printing out the Buried Elder Dwellings, Twisted Anemones, Toxic Alien Pines, the Venusian Corals, the Parasite Stalagmites, the Underwater Stone Caves, and the Underwater Monster Add-on. After it had dried, I kind of realized that the monster was designed to be used on a flat gaming table because it's, it's more designed for like D&D, this in particular thing. So what I did, I used a large cave and like chopped it up with a saw and then stuck it to the side of the, the rock formation so the monster could like look like he's swimming out of the cave. I used UV resin, torch, this is really good for gluing stuff because it like fills a gap essentially. So I used that to hold it in place and then when it got the formation I wanted, I used expanding foam to like fill the gap. Kind of like pushed it where I wanted it. When it does dry, you just recarve the shape you want and then I covered it in more of the wall filler mixture. I wrote Georgie into helping me painting all the corals and the rocks and stuff like that because I just knew I wouldn't be able to do it all by myself. <laughs> oh, no what should I do? So you said you've already decided all the time. Oh, okay, cool. So, see how it starts at the orange and then goes out toward the yellow. Okay. I like how it was my project and not yours. What do you mean? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to build that around me. Like, right, the colours are this. You, you said... I'll put some tunes on. Yeah, good. Good ones if you want. Copyright free. Like, Lo-fi. Lo-fi, yeah. Or, I mean, it's relatively new. I've not actually listened to it before. I need to stop holding my breath on the phone. How's that? Is oh, that cringe? Feels like, it feels like I should be painting coral, you know? It feels like yes. Yeah, this is what this is what I'm gonna have to use in all of the video to get the ASMR uh, <laughs> crowd in. Yeah. You reckon? I think so. Is that okay? Yeah, I like it. So we spent like an afternoon painting all the corals and the rocks up in loads of like bright colours. So Georgie did some pinks and some light blues and I did some like oranges, yellows and greens. Just so we had like a nice variety when we came to gluing it all down. The rock formation after was really, really easy to paint. I primed it black and loads of companies these days are making dry brush brushes, but this is a 69p makeup brush that I bought from a cheap store. And then I just used it for dry brushing because it's really got really soft bristles and it holds paint really well. So I basically went from like a really dark gray and then working my way up to like a white dry brush. And then I painted the small details that I had on the rock formation already. So this is from the 3D printed parts that I'd already inset into the diorama. Such like the barnacles, the corals, and you know, so I just used like a mixture of bright colours, gave them a quick wash, and then just highlighted it with a bright colour as well. At this point, I also started to paint the monster. This was really, really fun, and I pretty much exclusively used inks and oils because they're easy to use and loads and loads of fun. I'm quite new to them, but here goes. I primed it black and then gave it a strong zenithial highlight using white ink. I use white ink rather than white paint as it gives a smoother coat than any other white paint I've ever used. Then with a deep turquoise ink, I thin it with volume prover and spray it all over the model. Because inks are really translucent, they allow the base colour to shine through more, so you get like a wicked gradient here. Once that had dried, I mixed in a bright turquoise and built up the highlight on his face, and then I did the same with a little bit of white ink as well. Once that had dried, I used a purple ink to shade the underbelly, the mouth, the tentacles, just to give some definition, and then I highlighted the tentacles with a white ink once again, before going over with a magenta ink to get this wicked teal and magenta colour contrast, which I really like, by the way. <laughs> As I dried, I hit it with a gloss varnish and mixed up a deep purple oil wash. Oil washes are thinned with mineral spirits and have a huge work time. You can reactivate them. So I washed it all over and then left it to dry and then went back in with some mineral spirits and cleaned it off the flat surfaces. The oil paint then flows back into the recesses again and gives a nice smooth blend of shading. You can also use like a cotton swab or something similar to get the rest of the oils back off. Once done, I hit it with another varnish. I painted the teeth with some bone colours. I painted the eyes white and then used the yellow ink to give it some colour. I then added some depth with the yellow wash, which is basically like an orange wash. I then brought the brightness back up with the yellow ink and a little bit of white as well. As a little quick finishing touch, I also used some Tamiar Clear Red, which is like a translucent blood effect. So I used that on the teeth and the mouth just to give it some variation once again. Once everything had dried, I laid everything out and started clipping the rocks and the plants off of the bases that we came onto, and then glued them to the rock formation using UV glue. We did this fairly randomly and tried to like vary the colours all over. And once we felt like we got enough of the plants and rocks on, we used some of the other models with printers and the sea critters as well to fill up some of the gaps. I also used some of the acrylic rod to glue some of the models and suspend them in the water when it was all set. And there it is, the rock formation and layout is complete. I'm, I'm like super chuffed with it. It looked exactly how I planned it to. However, the next part was the real uncharted territory now i had to actually cast it in resin <laughs> 
So I actually ordered three kilograms of two-part clear cast resin. Initially, I mixed up like a small batch to paint over di diorama. The idea behind this was to help seal the paint job that I'd already done and try and stop bubbles forming in the main pour. Reason being, it'll help the surface tension and let the resin flow properly into the diorama. I then used PETG sheet to create a mold around the diorama. I used hot glue to hold the bottom and then this was a little bit thick, so I like end up wrapping loads of tape around it just to hold it in place. I will say that I won't recommend this plastic to do this job ever again. Once it had all dry, I chopped up an old whisk and jammed it in my drill and mixed up two kilograms of resin and then used two drops of the deep turquoise ink to colour it. And then I was ready to do the pour. But before that, and at last, it seemed that Elodie and Andrin were safe. The golden sand beneath their feet warmed their bodies through, and as the waves rolled in onto the beach, the memories of their previous ordeals seemed far behind. But then... A low grumble emanated from the water before them, growing louder, deeper, and more menacing as the sound enveloped them. As the last of their ship sank, so rose a creature from the ocean, so monstrous and unearthly that the pair were almost overcome. Its yellow eyes gleamed and its cyan skin rippled as it loomed over them. After all they had been through, the two would surely not go down without a mighty fight. My Mini Factory is a fantastic website that hosts all sorts of STLs that you can download and 3D print at home. Whether these are free or paid for, there's just a humongous range that you can look through. Right now, they're hosting Fantastic Plants and Rocks Volume 2 by Print Your Monsters. In this campaign, in just the core set, there's 20 sets of 5 different styles of rocks and plants that you can use in your games of D&D, or for terrain in games of Warhammer 40,000 and other games. So just in the core set, there's over 100 STL files you can print that come supported and pre-supported and already pre-hollowed if necessary. There's also a whole bunch of stretch goals that are being unlocked as we speak, and the list feels endless. Not only that, there's a whole bunch of add-ons which you can get included, or you can go for one of the pledges where you can download all of these all together for a significant discount. We're using the underwater creature today, along with a whole bunch of other files, which without them I wouldn't have been able to make this video. If you back today using my link in the description and using the discount code HELLSTORM5, you'll also get 5% off any pledges. There's only a week left in the campaign as it's due to end on the 28th of February, so make sure you jump on today and don't miss out. You can pledge for as little as $21, but there's also other the pledges available, including pledges from Plants and Rocks Volume 1. I'm really excited about this campaign, so I want to say a massive thank you to Print Your Monster and My Mini Factory for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to use my discount code if you do pledge to get 5% off. Otherwise, let's do some resin pouring. So now it was time to pour some resin. <laughs> I'm going to make this ASMR now. Georgie said ASMR must stand for ah, so much resin, but we had to mix up like two kilograms, and then it was a case of like pouring it super, super slowly. After I'd finished pouring it, I was super excited and I just like, just left it. I just went away from it and left it for like an hour because I just wanted to like, I really wanted to like open it already, but I just, it looked super cool. So I just waited and that's where things kind of went wrong. So the, the mold started generating loads and loads of heat. It's obviously an exothermic reaction, but it generated a hell of a lot of heat. 
So much so that the plastic actually contracted. The mold I was using contracted. So it like shrunk as it was as it was set in. And because it got so hot, it actually melted some of the plastic to a point where the plastic had actually welded to the cast. I spent a lot of time trying to get the acrylic sheet off the resin. And like I think I spent like three hours trying to do it. And basically my worst fear came to light. <laughs> Sadly, I kind of gave up trying to get the plastic off because I kind of like looked through the acrylic and I saw there was lots of bubbles formed in the resin. So the excess resin, which I left in the bowl, came out perfectly. This is just beautiful. It came out perfectly, no bubbles, perfectly solid. This also got very hot, but this was fine. The bowl that it was sat in just like snapped back to normal and this popped out straight away. However, the same story can't be said for the actual cast. So this is the finished product and sadly, it <laughs> From a distance, it looks cool, but sadly it is a fail. At the bottom, we've got like exposed resin, but then you might be able to see the crack. That's basically like the acrylic, which is welded to the resin. So at the bottom, it came off fine. But then like the middle and the top, because the, so much heat was generated, it, it did fail. So the acrylic can't come off now. So I'd have to use like either an electric sander or like a lathe to get this off. It also like super duper like deformed. It was round when we first made it, but like the shape has deformed. And then as you can see on the inside, it's just full of bubbles like the surface bubbles aren't too bad but like around the models there's like loads of loads of bubbles which have formed so much so that it just looks unnatural there's some that do look natural but there's lots that look unnatural i'm not really sure what went wrong i don't know if it was like plastic reacted or the heat made the plastic react or maybe it was something to do with the paint made the the bubbles form maybe i poured it too high Maybe because there was a funnel on top. I'm not really sure. So if anyone's a resin expert, then do let me know. But as you can see, as cool as it could have been, and as, as big this thing is, as a first attempt, we did have a fail, which is obviously gutting because I was so proud of the diorama in itself. I like hid a little clam at the back, which was really cool, but now you can't see it. So as a project, it was really, really fun. I'm obviously a bit gutted that the outcome was wrong, but I feel like if I did this project again, so maybe something a little bit smaller, to say this was the first time I've ever poured any resin, I pretty much used like just a little bit on the base before, nothing like this. As a first attempt, I was quite chuffed. Like the bottom of it looks great, but yeah, maybe if I did it again, maybe not do something as big. So <laughs> maybe this video won't get a million views. <laughs> The thing is with hobbying, when you're trying anything new, especially when you're going so big and so crazy, like these things can happen. Me personally, I don't really, I try not to get disheartened by something like this. It just means that I gave it a good go. It was a good first attempt and now I can just go and try it again. I've still got like a liter of epoxy resin, so I could do something like maybe half the size and still have enough. But yeah, it was such a fun project. Obviously it was great to like do some hobbying with Georgie and it was great to like do something completely outside of my comfort zone, uh, which I always like to do. I like to experiment. So I want to say a massive thank you to my mini factory for allowing me to promote the Print Your Monsters campaign because without them, I wouldn't have had this really, really cool underwater sea monster now trapped in eternal bubbles. <laughs> so a massive shout out to them for sponsoring the video. It was, it was a really, really cool project and hopefully they like the result. <laughs> Massive shout out to Georgie for helping me doing all the painting and arranging and also helping me write the D&D script for the advert. <laughs> a massive thank you to you guys for watching. Don't forget, use the discount code if you are interested in any of the STLs, which are, again, cast until the end of time in this, this block of resin. Use my discount code, use the links in the description. So massive shout out to them for sponsoring. Again, if anything I've used in this video, I wouldn't recommend this plastic, but everything else is a link in the description. It is an Amazon affiliate link, so it does help out the channel. If you like the video, then leave a comment. Have you ever thought about doing something like this or did you decide? not to because it's probably safer <laughs> and uh, let me know what you think that'd be really cool likes and comments really really help out the channel and they really help promote videos to other people as well if you haven't already please subscribe thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed this coffee time i know it was a little bit different uh, but hopefully we'll uh, catch you in the next one <laughs> bye bye now